marriage masala it's full of spice married life is full of spice it can be ah pani do pani do kind of spice or mm that was good kind of when you eat one of those guinea muti marvin kai they say you know that parrot shaped mango when you take a bite of it your whole face contorts but you love that taste marriage is like that it's like a guinea muti marvin kai okay it gives you a tough time but you still want to go for it because wedding is such a very important part of marriage right marriage is later on once that uh, you know the mangal sutra is tried and all the saath phere ho gaya and babul ki dua ye all that happens so marriage is later but uske pehle wedding jo aati hai oh my god it's such a headache and such a drain on the purse but there are some people who make it easy for you who plan it for you so they are called wedding planners a wedding planner lakshmi hi chaya hi lakshmi welcome to this show thank you so much thank you for having me here yes and i am going to know everything about wedding mere dono beton ka shaadi ho gaya hai i didn't <laughs> even know about the existence of wedding planners yeah but anyway in our hindu this thing you know the wedding is planned by the girls people oh well <laughs> but my take on the whole thing is why should it be only girls people absolutely it's the boy and the girl who get married right absolutely so both should be involved in it so we'll talk about all that and sure. um, can you just introduce yourself lakshmi like why did you get into this what is it all about then we'll take it further sure my name is lakshmi ram mohan and i run a wedding planning company called dream weaver weddings um i'm based in uh, bangalore delhi and uh, i've done about 22 weddings since uh, I started 4 years ago. And the reason I started was because uh, of several factors. Uh the first one being my experience with two weddings which were fairly socially relevant to Bangalore, one that had a wedding planner and the other one that didn't. And the difference in the output for two for both the weddings was so apparent. And um in the one that didn't have a wedding planner, I sort of got thrown into the deep end. and uh, i didn't sink i okay. floated along quite nicely and loved it and it just made me think that perhaps this is a gap that i could plug um it added on to my experience in production and in events and it went beyond just an excel sheet therefore you know it wasn't corporate corporate it you know necessitated an understanding and you know a, a sort of an aesthetic sense and you know you have to be a people's person and things like that and it just seemed like the right thing to do it didn't take very much in fact no investment at all to start off other than uh, the goodwill and support of your family and friends and it helps to have a good network in the city so um that's what uh, this is all about and that's how i got started okay. that's right. so can we go a little go back in time sure i mean to your to... college days or something oh sure um uh, well college was in christ college i i did uh, mm-hmm. my bachelor's in arts in communicative english and uh, as part of my course um, i was heavily involved in um, intercollege fests um, i sang a little bit i was in the theater a little bit i danced a little bit so overall you know pretty active on the extracurriculars and thankfully our department was fantastic in supporting all our initiatives so we had a lot of either interdepartmental or interclass or intercollegiate events to organize and uh, there were a few of us that sort of came to the fore to put these things together and by virtue of being in theater etc where you do get exposed to things like uh, backstage and costumes and um decor and you know all of that the less glamorous part of the, it absolutely the yeah. running around and the donkeys you know, work absolutely and uh, you know you sort of know exactly where to go for what and and all of that and added to that once i left college i started working for advertising very briefly for advertising and i learned printing Mm. um which is crucial uh because uh, you end up doing a lot of that as part of weddings as part of events and from then on i started working with uh, the olive beach in bangalore and uh, i handled events and marketing for them for almost 4 years again necessitated my knowing the back of beyonds for everything fabric paper the works and it really 
gave you perspective on all the little things that went into making something um, great and glamorous at the end of the day. And um, which you can't see from absolutely yes. when you only see a finished product and say, oh well, well put together. Yes, and they say, oh that together. looks so lovely, yeah. and yeah, and, and and the idea is it is put together, and mm. there are a lot of things that go into putting it together, and uh, so that sort of production foundation of mine was very solid before I took on uh, wedding planning and. Um, it helped because if you have to give your clients the best at the best cost, you need to know where to go and you need to know who to go to and you need to know how to do this. So, um, yes, yeah, so my past experience was absolutely fantastic and I will you know, not take away anything of that. It just helped. Uh, it helped um, in the way that I, I dealt with clients because a lot of my clients are primarily non-resident Indians and being NRIs are exposed to a lot outside internationally and uh, thanks to my past jobs I've had the opportunity to work with non-resident Indians before and expats and it helped that exposure definitely helped in in understanding where they came from and um, half of my work was actually um bringing them up to speed because a lot of them had left India 20, 30 years ago. Some of them had not ever visited after they'd left 20 or 30 years ago. So a lot of my work was actually um, all about bringing them up to speed, telling them what India is all about. And, you know, it's not necessarily the cheapest place to have a wedding at, um, but uh, but you can get the best in terms of, um, you know, quality, in terms of hospitality, in terms of transportation. And, you, and with a good team and with the right kind of planner on your side, you can really put a fantastic do together without a problem. In your introduction about all this, uh, Lakshmi, you came up with so many points. We could have an entire show on each of those points. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. So, and I'm trying to keep all that in my mind to pick it out and say this, this, and sure. Okay. First thing I want to catch on to is everybody says you must do arts, you must do science, you must become, you know, do a, a engineering degree or something like that. And everyone kind of looks down at somebody who takes arts and communicative <laughs> English, please, of all things. True. Okay. Well, but uh, you took those subjects and yes. look what you did with it, right? Yes. I think uh, for me personally, it was um, the question of what I didn't want to do. I didn't want to do science. I was very clear about that. So I'm I sure many of them who do it don't want to do it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So I didn't want to do science. And uh, unfortunately, my school didn't have uh, the option of, of, of an arts um, department. So I did commerce. I did very well. And You need a lot uh, of it when you plan something also. I think. I, I'd you know? imagine. I mean, a little bit of organization. I mean, you need to be organized. You need to know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to know a little bit of your Excel sheet and know how to do mm -hmm. your numbers mm -hmm. and, you know, just a bit of that, especially if you're running your own business eventually. But um, I did commerce. I did economics. And, um, and once school was done, I, the, the sort of the, the most natural next step would have been to do a, a BCom, um, but again, I was a bit trepidatious about that. I wasn't, I wasn't really sure. I wanted to sit and pour over financial books and become an accountant or, yeah. you know, whatever one became after doing a BCom. But uh, so I took arts because uh, I've always liked literature and uh, I write and uh, or I used to, and uh, it it just seemed a, a more creative space uh, my course also had psychology mm -hmm. which was the you know which was also considered a fairly good uh, stream to take up at the time and uh, net net it just worked out because the course gave us everything we wanted uh, exposure being the m most important thing so we had internships uh, each year we had to do a different kind of internship mm -hmm. so the first year was with a newspaper the second year with a radio station and the third year making your own film and doc you know a, a documentary all of which added to this was part everything. of your curriculum yes okay. so uh, we Just had sort of curiosity sure. um, are there more girls in this kind of a uh, what shall i say a course than guys um I would have to say in my class, yes, we had, I think, 11 boys mm -hmm. or 12 boys. I'm, I could be wrong. But uh, yes, the girls far outnumbered the boys. Um, having said that, um, my class is also the one that I think has the maximum number of entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, a very high percentage of my class run their own businesses in really? filmmaking or photography or um, um uh, yeah, um, uh, technical writing and mm -hmm. uh, they have their own sound engineering studio, studios and things like that. So I think um, the course is varied enough 
to give us a huge choice okay. in what we wanted to specialize in eventually and our internships helped us do that because whoever worked with in print worked with either a newspaper or a magazine or something like that that got their interest and and the department was good enough to allow all of that all which things. was really really helpful okay and you said you finally homed in on the wedding planning yes because you found there was some lacuna in some weddings yes which was done without much planning yes okay yeah so if you're going to talk about that mm -hmm. Where does the planning begin? Does it begin from choosing the girl and the boy? <laughs> no, 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 not my style of planning. At least okay. you need to necessarily have your other half uh, ready, fixed. ready. लड़का और लड़की होना चाहिए. Yes, absolutely, होना okay. चाहिए. And all you need to do is come to me and say, "This is a date," mm -hmm. and uh, ideally have a date as well. Okay. Um, and um, and then you tell me, and uh, we have a date, and this is my fiance, and uh, this is what we want to do now. Help us. Okay. So we start um, on everything from. helping you identify how big or small you want mm -hmm. the wedding to be the budget like yes not just budgetary but the number of people hmm. that you want to invite but And that depends on your budget isn't it it could okay. it could um a south indian wedding could have a huge number but the budgets needn't be that high hmm. simply because our south indian meals are not very expensive so really? okay. when you have a yele uta you know uh -huh. when you have one of those it's it's not a very expensive affair it isn't as compared to let's just say a, a hotel dinner or a not reception cheap, yeah. not of course correct so um um so right from the the size of your wedding and mm -hmm. consequently where you can hold the wedding and uh, depending on the time of year etc we advise you on a you know on a an outdoor venue or an indoor venue mm. it starts there and the next thing that we do is figure out hospitality and transportation for the guests that are coming in your invitation cards your photographers your videographers and then we get into bridal services you know the bride's looks how many functions are there what do you need to do what do you need to wear okay you even advise them on what they need to yes. do okay. yes on occasion we've had brides who've needed help in terms of diet and nutrition mm -hmm. and well-being so you know, we recommend them to uh experts uh, who can help them with things like that and we tell them how not to cut their hair x months before the wedding mm, and you know okay. their waxing schedule and you know all of that so we do get into that kind of detail okay. and um, and help them plan and when it's an nri uh, couple where either the couple are um, you know completely disconnected from india so like i said we we play that part of you know what's available here do you need to plug in anything from where you where you come from uh be it uh, lagos or be it paris or wherever it is mm -hmm. and if it's an if if one of if either the bride or the groom are non indian mm -hmm. then uh, you know sort of um, you suggest what kind of rituals to follow what kind of, of rituals to follow okay. or if you, they didn't want a ritualistic wedding then what are their options um you know what are the things that they would need to do anyway because regardless yeah. of the final wedding day when there you know, are when, some which are yes. like compulsory for a yeah, wedding yeah you yeah if if it's a hindu wedding or they're loosely following the hindu um religion or culture then you would have a you know a ganesh puja to to start, start it off, off. Uh, and uh, so you advise the other family about it and sort of help them understand what the indian um part of their wedding would entail okay. and that's very interesting because a lot of them have a lot of preconceived notions a lot mm -hmm. of them have um no idea and uh, it, it's nice for them also to know that you know there is a practicality behind the wedding rituals and there's a reason why things are done and there's a reason why we have so many functions and so on and what the significance of each of it is and when that is explained they're more than happy to you know it, okay. yeah jump in and say no i would like the nalanga or i would like the you know uh, the puja or whatever because they understand the significance of it so that that's that's interesting as well what's your forte which south indian tambram kind of weddings or across the board across the board um i've done a lot of uh, Well, uh, a good percentage of my weddings have been Arya Samaji because mm. uh, they've been uh, the the bride and groom are either of two different religions, two different nationalities, two yeah. different communities. So the Arya Samaj following the Vedic rites is the most practical way to do it because they encompass all the necessary rituals for a wedding. Um, so that is that has been out of necessity something that I've done most often. Okay. Um, and they also explain to the bride and bridegroom what yes. it's all about. Yes. And, okay. Yes. Uh, a good priest takes mm. the not just the bride and the groom but the entire even um, the janta who are sitting there yes, yeah absolutely through many through of them, the them are details. married and they don't even know they've said all that <laughs> because it was all in sanskrit or some of the language absolutely that's yeah. the biggest hassle that a lot of couples these days have they don't want the long drawn out uh 
Sanskrit mumbling. I can't even call it chanting because nobody knows what the exactly. pandit is saying, and that's really unfortunate because um, when you really break it down, and when we, when I saw the explanations, it was it's beautiful and it it means something really really um, um, important, and uh, it's deep and it's 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 lovely. So I, it it it's nice to have all of that explained so that people understand the relevance of what's going on, and it's um, it also helps because. Um, you know, we've attended enough weddings where no one's paying attention. <laughs> Everyone's wandering around, chatting, and nothing's and holding their attention. Nothing holds their attention. Yeah. So having a ceremony that's succinct and to the point, and explained and interactive with the, the audience, um, goes a long way in ensuring that people are actually paying attention to what they've been invited for. And a lot of couples want that. You know, they don't want people to be wandering around. They want people to understand what's mm. going on. They want people to be really involved in what's happening there. So, what they call engaging the guests. Absolutely, mm. yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So, be it a little booklet that explains what's happening, or uh, you know, either we, we we do like prompters on screens, or mm. you can have the pundit explain or a translator explain it, and and it helps and it really works. So that's what we're looking into. Do you think those kind of uh, weddings where the couple know what's happening and they are aware of what they're seeing do you think they have a better chance of lasting than <laughs> I mean this is just off the mark like. no I don't think it's um I don't I wouldn't I know I think that's too much of a blanket statement to make because at mm -hmm. the end of the day it's two personalities and regardless of what you've been seeing I mean people exchange vows all over the world in some form or the other and it doesn't matter what's being chanted as you're getting married as long as you remember what's important to you After once the wedding, the wedding is over Okay. You know, that's just a ceremony, and a ceremony is just a few minutes. And at the end of the day, it's it's your commitment to the other person. It doesn't matter what you said. So, how do you get your clients? I mean, how how do you know whom you can help? How do they know they can come to you? Where um, is the fit happening? So, um, clients come to me on a purely word of mouth mm, basis okay. I do have a website and a page on Facebook that one can visit and okay. take a look at so you know the plethora of services and of course clients want to know what your past work has been some of them want to know what who your past clients have been yeah, okay. what your clients have to say so I have testimonials but the best kind of business is the one that's been recommended uh, to you somebody who's already experienced used your yes. services yes. either the client itself or someone who's attended a wedding mm -hmm. and then they say you know we you know there was this planner my friend used this planner and they were very happy and maybe you should try and contact her and uh, that is the best kind of um, business really because um, I have an almost 100% conversion rate on recommend recommendation based um uh, businesses as opposed to cold calls which uh, it, which is mostly a shopping expedition so how do you make cold calls whom do you go and make a cold uh, call not to? me uh, when no, the clients planner. yeah like if anyone were to they google you so they just look for wedding planner Bangalore sure so I, ha I have a website it's www.dreamweaverweddings.in you have to be a little slow for that sure I'll say that again it's www.dreamweaverweddings.in dreamweaverweddings.in dreamweaverweddings that's right and I N I N okay, and I also have a Facebook page by the same name, Dream Weaver Weddings. Okay, you can look me up there. My work, testimonials, clients I've had in the past, they're all up there. They're all up. Yes. There. Now, when I say you make a cold call, how do you make a cold call? You never do that. I don't. I haven't to date made a cold call. Mm -hmm. It has always been um, the other way around. I've been very, very fortunate for business to run like that. Um, and it has everything to do with the kind of network that um, I've managed to build uh, over the my, over my years in the city, uh, through college, through past work, etc. Plus, um, when you're on a forum like Facebook mm -hmm. and you're active in a forum like Facebook, it's um, you know you're, you're you're out there. You're really re literally out there. So it's not very difficult to invite inquiries okay. I would say okay. um, I'd imagine pretty much all of us function like that in the industry currently there really is no hard and fast cold calling is virtually impossible because there is no way of knowing um, unless you uh, like go and meet the managers of uh, hotels and things like that yes. wedding yes. halls yes. of no? the choice which are the one because yes. I think people today have to book well in advance yes they do Yes, so they these do. people have a register. Which yes, so they have a you know they have their own uh, calendar. Calendar. Then you can cold dates. call them and say. Yeah, we don't cold call them. What we do is normally what a venue likes to do is to is to give a client a three sixty in any case. Mm -hmm. So they would say if someone came and booked uh, a venue, they would they would a say turnkey. They'll yes, say we'll take we on have we project. have these people on our panel. Yeah. 
why don't you give them a call and depending on your relationship with that venue they would recommend you or refer clients to you and that's how it typically works as okay. well yeah. so do you have to make these pr visits to all these shadi mahals and things places like that <laughs> well more than pr visits it's good to know who's around and yes you do need to make a couple of calls and you know sort of yeah. what's happening and happy new years and happy diwalis and <laughs> Gift you, you, boxes you well, well yeah, not that's necessarily not they also should survive yeah yeah absolutely so it's it's good um you do tend to sort of then um um you know come down to a, your your core few places that you enjoy working at and that you enjoy interacting with the people of and some of them i mean most most of the weddings you don't have a choice because the the venues usually already booked mm-hmm. because people yeah, have they realize they understand now that you know venues need to be booked well in advance as as early as a year ahead in advance and they google and find out which is within their budget a lot of them do yes uh, if they're finding it difficult to find a date or a place or a budget that matches then it comes into our kitty and then we have okay. to give them options for a city like bangalore depending on the kind of ambiance you want there are very few mm-hmm. really outdoor spaces that are non hotel up for grabs so in delhi you have a lot of farm houses delhi is no? massive yes yeah. delhi gurgaon is huge there's there's no limit to where you can have a wedding and they have some really stunning properties that you can have weddings mm. at and um, the beauty of these spaces is that they they shells i mean they have lovely lawns and things like that yeah. and then everything has to be worked up which is great because it lets you you know let's your creativity lose and you can do pretty much anything you want there so that's beautiful mm. the only thing is that becomes extremely seasonal because outdoor venues in Cold in, in, in a delhi yes. is only during the winter um which then means there's a rush for these spaces. you mean weddings happen in winter Don't isn't it too cold out there in Delhi? No, that's the best time for weddings. Okay. Everyone's in their finery and layers and layers ah, of yeah, yeah. Manish Malhotra and Sabya Sachi and Manish Arora and what have you. And okay. um, yes, that's the best time to have a wedding, even in my opinion. It's beautiful weather. Tell me, do guests come to you to plan their outfits to attend the wedding? Yes, if they are all <laughs> coming from outside of India, yes. So okay. that's normally part of this one of the services we offer for mm. um, guests coming in. If you hand if we are handling guest logistics, then we have a web. site or a little forum where they can interact with us and we tell them what to pack and what the weather is going to be like mm-hmm. we send little introductory emails to them um right from vaccinations required to visa mm-hmm. papers required to to the kind of medicines that are available here if you have allergies what you should do and you know all of these little you things you must be having a ready template for all that yes you know? yes kind we do have ready templates depending on the country that they're coming from and you know uh, things like that and uh yes so we do tell them what to wear and i mean very sort of broadly like you could wear silks and uh, stay away from a black if it's for the wedding and you know things like that or stay away from a pure white if it's something else depending on the culture and depending on the religion and things like that so yes now you're talking a lot about nris yes okay. they do form the How majority of my clients because, because you've said it quite often now yes. so I, it's really stuck in my mind yeah how do they know they google um, it's online just it's just online and uh, and is bangalore a favorite place it is it is not the, delhi so much um delhi is I, i wouldn't say a favorite place delhi might be a default setting because you're from delhi okay. but i do have i've had clients that have chosen bangalore for its um you know weather chosen bangalore for its um you know the ambiance that you have in a lot of these mm-hmm. outdoor venues so cosmopolitan but still not too big it's not too big it's yeah, perfect it's a pretty city to show off to people yes. and the distances are not crazy it's not as Absolutely. as large as a delhi for example or bombay so, also or a bombay mm-hmm. yes and um so i've had clients who who who've chosen bangalore because bangalore is halfway between the uk and australia and you know the mm. bride is from australia and the groom is from the uk airport. yes absolutely so so the your means of getting to the venue accessibility is huge be it a city be it the venue anywhere um and nri is again um not by design it's just something that has developed over okay. a period of time because for nri's wedding plan a, a wedding planner is a necessity mm-hmm. um they require somebody on ground to put things together because they are not here Long distance and no? remote yeah. control is impossible when you have to handle more than uh you know five or six vendors and therefore for them it's a necessity so i plug a requirement as opposed to anything else you talked about vendors yeah. so do you have your empaneled vendors or um, each time you would like to experiment with somebody no i don't experiment no. uh bec- i don't think my clients would appreciate <laughs> experimentation <laughs> you don't want to say you yeah, know he's the first time doing yeah, it yeah for him, you know with for the first mine. time let's see um you know he he might just do a good job no i um, i i don't have the liberty of doing that mm. um 
of course, for the first time ever, we we had to take our chances, but we did go with people that were recommended to us as well. Okay. And uh, you do, like I said before about the venues, you do sort of um, have a core, uh, three or four people, uh, be it florists or mm-hmm. or. or tailors or whoever it might be what about uh, catering that's caterers really as well thing, yes it? absolutely caterers who who you go back to time and time again because their prices are great their service is fantastic uh, the quality of quality. their services is so good yeah. and um, yes so so they don't you're not in panel i mean you have no obligation they have no obligation to work only with you but yes you do tend to go back to these people because they just fit the bill on several um, criteria okay now these vendors whom mm-hmm. you have yeah they just come in when you want them to come. yes it's not like <coughs> it's not like you have them on a salary basis oh no 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 retainer no. i'm on not at salary all. but retainer not at all will they let you down at any time no because have you had um, any experience of them letting you i down? really uh, no unless i have been negligent in informing them about the dates in advance well in advance mm. but re- very rarely would anyone that's empaneled or rather anyone that's um, been with you for i've i've been doing okay. this for four years so you know we've had enough projects together so very rare for that to happen and uh, and it's never to the extent that we'll reach a client or impact the client's big day because that is something we You'd cannot sort it allow out at yes your end. yes Absolutely. Did this movie have a big? Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Is it Bang Bang Bang? May yeah, I yeah. just say I was there before the movie. Oh, okay. um, because they, maybe they got ideas from you. <laughs> oh, no, but uh, the movie, um, the the immediate impact of that movie was the number of CVs I would get from MBA students, people who uh, oh, okay. in corporate jobs, uh, requesting for interviews and expressing their interest in wanting to do uh, weddings and wedding planning, and that That's continues to date. Yes, That's very interesting. Um, and um, MBA yeah. after paying so much of money to yes. get in, yes. after doing cracking the cat, yes, they spend lakhs. all of them i think um, 8 out of 9 literally of them have and are mba students who are corporate going to jobs mncs with big fat packages but want to come for a band baja bar attack yes they love the romance of the whole thing oh, maybe they love they the were, glamour of the whole thing they were inspired thing. by the movie perhaps. possibly <laughs> possibly they don't know it's a lot of hard work yeah though. they don't realize that if shahrukh khan doesn't arrive for my client's performance i don't get up You'll there and dance yes yeah. i don't get paid <laughs> but you know we don't get up there and do the item number but um yeah so a lot of them um see that whole glamour quotient and it's and i have to admit it is it, it, it is, is very glamorous definitely. yes um what they don't see are the sleepless nights and the puffy eyes and the yelling and the screaming and you know the stress and all of that they don't see all of that which is which is just as well because But at that age they can take it i guess Well, if you're in the business and it doesn't matter what age you are, you just have to. No, take but they'll it. have this in any corporate. Life. Yes, absolutely. It's not today's uh, corporate life is. Yeah, it's not easy. Target ridden. It is. It is. It is. So everybody absolutely. is going to have this. So might as well have a shadi wala tension. Yeah. Why not? Maybe finding your own life partner. Also. <laughs> yeah. Well. Oh gosh. Yes. <laughs> well, that also happens. Anyway, this by the way, uh, are you single or married? Uh, I'm not single. I'm not married. I'm seeing somebody. Okay. They call it being in relationship. Yes, I'm in a relationship. Okay. Does he help you with your business? He does. He, he does. does actually. Yes. He's he's pretty good with the, um, you know, with the coordination. If I need an extra hand. He's not hand. an MBA. Beg your pardon. He's not an MBA. No, he's not. He runs his own business as well. Oh. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, if it's an off day for him or something, he's he's there helping, packing, whatever. You know. Do you have partners or you have? Employees? I used to. I used to have partners, and both of them have moved on to do different things. Mm-hmm. And I currently have one permanent employee, which is all we require because the business tends to be seasonal. It's not. It's not like we have yeah. a minimum number to hit every month or anything like that. So I have one person on board. Regularly. And what when you say seasonal? What are the times when you're really busy? Um, Between, October uh, through to March. October to March. October okay. to March. So this is your busy period. Yes, ideally it's a busy season for weddings. Okay. Um, however, because again, I mean, India is so diverse religiously. Um, we have if we're doing weddings that are non-Hindu weddings, and mm-hmm. there really isn't a time or a muhurtam or you know any of that. So that pretty much all through the year. But we do weddings. Uh, I do between eight and twelve weddings in the year, and once my quota is done, I'm done. It's almost like one a month. Yeah, on an average, it could be, but then the the you know the maximum number of weddings come together between October and um, 
March. So it could be two a month, three a month. It could be, yeah. Uh, it could be, yes, okay. yes. It could. And be the like rest that. of the time, what do you do? The rest of the time, I prep for the coming season. Coming season. <laughs> get new vendors. Yes. Get so new figure ideas. out new vendors. Yes. Um, you know, start planning because, like I said, where uh, clients come to us almost a year in advance, mm -hmm. and uh, and the reason they come to us is because there's a huge amount of work that's to be done. So. That happens. So all the clients that are being serviced between October and March, their mm -hmm. work happens between March and October. So, does it take you roaming around quite a bit, or can you? Is it could be a desk job, and everybody else comes to you, and you're like a general telling the soldiers where to go? Type yes. Stuff. Well, some of the times, yes, I I do sit in one place and have my, you know, sort of um, my my runners go out and get me samples and things like that. But um, mm -hmm. there is a fair amount of running around to be done. Um, as it gets nearer, I suppose. As no? it, yes. Uh, but even initially to check out venues, to ensure the menus are in place and, you know, tastings and things like that. So that does require some amount of running around. And if you're doing bridal trousseaus and all of that, mm. then all the more, because then you need to go for every fitting, fitting and ensure yes. that, yes. Yeah. So all of that is done. Um, but, uh, yes, it reaches fever pitch in that, you know, two months before the wedding and, uh, you know, you're running everywhere. You're figuring, you know, you're doing sampling by then and things like that. So, yeah. How does the family look at you as a business person who's doing their work for them? You know, like an employee types? Or do they look at you as you're a part of the family with more knowledge about all these things? We, um, the way I function is I try and integrate with the family. So mm -hmm. they consider me family because mm -hmm. they do at the end of the day, do trust me with their daughter or their son and a lot of things that are going on. And um, you also get to know the family very intimately as you, as you work with them over a period of three, four, five months. And by the time you're at the wedding, you know exactly which mommy or chacha to go to for what and you know who the bride should be kept away from and who oh. the groom should be kept away from okay. and you know you get to know all of They'll these tell you those things little oh, yeah yeah absolutely that, absolutely you know? kisi ko but you know yeah, that yeah, but person. listen when I'm getting dressed I do not want this person near me and you know all of that so I prefer to work as part of the family also because it just helps me function better yeah. and uh, the Indian wedding at the end of the day is all about family and mm -hmm. uh, the best way to go about it is it is all is also to involve them and that's you know that's fantastic so if I can involve the family in as much uh, as possible I would and uh, people like that like aunts like responsibility they'd like to be told that they have to have the bride's things ready by such and such a time and you know all of that and you just become that one point contact for your client you're a link with yes. all of them yes so you just that, that person just has to make one call to you to say what's happening on my car what's happening on that blouse what's happening on the horse and you know I have the answer I might be calling someone from their team or from their family or from my team but you know that's right so when you use the word team who is more team spirit is more in whom the boy's side or the girl's side <laughs> um, right now um as I think at the beginning of the show, when you talked about who spends on the wedding, yes. it really boils down to that. Because if it is the couple mm -hmm. that's spending, and and uh, again, I see that a lot of my clients have the couple controlling finances. Is it a new emerging trend? Yes, it is. And it's a fantastic good. trend Very because good. couples are saving up and they're spending on their wedding, Excellent. mostly because they have a vision for their wedding, which is not necessarily the same as their families. And so, you know, the one that's holding the purse strings usually has the last call and they want to be the ones Always. making that call. <laughs> um, so if it's a wedding that's financed by the couple, then there is nothing much to choose between teams in terms of their families. Everybody's one single team. If it's um, a one-sided affair, then obviously my interaction is definitely more with the, you know, the, the side that's um, Who's paying employed the money me. Out. Yes, absolutely. And my loyalties obviously will have to go to them. But um, also as a planner, we play that 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 middleman devil's advocate role, which we have to because there are practicalities to be considered. There's another side altogether to be considered. So we try and balance all of that out. And um, and we try and make sure that that whatever is happening is, is something that is unanimously wanted mm -hmm. and okay. not just completely one sided because it just leads to a better event at the end of the day. So. So you kind of check with the other, is it okay? Yes. Do you check. have any other thing, yes. inputs to give in? Yes, especially if they're culturally different. And then, you know, and um, families are very different because some of them just expect it to be done and some of them don't quite know what to do about it. So we ensure that we have a conversation with, say, the groom's parents, if the bride's parents are paying for the wedding. But we ensure that we have a talk with the groom's parents so we understand their expectations of the whole thing. And it's translated well to the bride's to the bride, yeah. family. Not like a demand or something Absolutely, like that. yes. So do you think it could work better if we did this or that? Absolutely. So 
there's a way to put it forth and you know just say that you, you take fun elements from very traditional weddings and put that together to create something that's you know fabulous for them and uh, yeah so uh, it it really depends on the kind of client that you know i get i don't know if uh, you agree with me or not see many marriages have a lot of problems in their marriage because of the problems in a wedding okay kuch theek nahi hua the laddu was not of the right <laughs> size usme kishmish kam tha you know some things like that yes creep into the fa- the couple's life um and it creates a lot of problem in their marriage is that so do you think um, as a marriage counselor i have come across many who come to me with these issues okay so shaadi mein aisa hua and my husband holds me responsible or the wife's the husband says my in-laws did this and that breaks up the marriage yes um i i would imagine that that has happened mm-hmm. a lot in the past and i'm sure it continues to happen um which is why like i said that conversation with both sides is crucial especially if um they they culturally different, different. um and it's for them you know you know how traditionally the boy side has all these airs and graces and hum ladke wale hain to hamari tarike se hona chahiye and it has to be done yeah. like this and like that and um, and i have seen that mm-hmm. i've we've had some very overbearing um mothers in law who have re- really made it very difficult for the brides to to prepare and plan for the wedding and they're stressed out and things like that so in such a case it's imp- for us it's uh, it it helps uh, to sit with the family mm-hmm. you know and there isn't a question of because at the end of the day if they want 20 uh, um tender coconuts for whatever reason or the laddus with kishmish or you know all of that it has to happen i mean i have to make it happen and i would rather not run around health scale and i'd much rather make sure that i i have that planned and i have that considered for which is why that conversation is crucial and i suppose uh, inevitably it sort of negates the issue of not of you know that not having been met yeah. and uh, yeah so that that those initial conversations help see in, earlier in what used to happen was before this i mean when the days when we got married i'm talking about 45 years ago types okay at that time we n- never had this concept of a wedding planner right. there was always some bua ji or masi ji from the absolutely son who used to be the spokesperson absolutely. and generally they were mischief makers <laughs> you know yahan ka wahan wahan ka yahan and then create a lot of they would have lot of fun creating essential narad in the totally in the you know <laughs> totally okay. but at least narad muni ka intention wo theek tha okay <laughs> okay narayan narayan his intention was good but yahan pe to you know thod pod ka intention hoti hai okay and lot of problems used to creep in because of these so called spokes people you right know. So by bringing a wedding planner in, you have a neutral person. Yes, you have a neutral person with who with no stakes. Other with than, no, yes, you, know, you pay for it and that's it. But yeah, that and you want a fa- fabulous end result. Yeah, and um, I mean, uh, there's nothing more to it than that. Uh, there is no personal interest vested in any of this, uh, the outcome of this, and um, and it makes business sense for you to make it successful because absolutely, I need to continue it. the business. Yes, yeah. yeah. So the second beti ka shadi bhi karna hai, uske tisra bete ka bhi karna hai. Kisi mau सी की बेटी की भी शादी करना है सो यस ऑल ऑफ दैट इज देयर या सो आई आई एग्री देयर आर देयर आर योर ट्रबल मेकर्स विद इन द फैमिली क्लोज टू देम नॉट सो क्लोज टू देम नेबर्स नेबर्स की समबडी एंड अगेन इट ऑल बॉइल्स डाउन टू द फैमिलीज देमसेल्व्स इट डिपेंड्स ऑन हाउ दे आर एज पीपल एंड इट डिपेंड्स ऑन um the kind of sway they have over their own family and and how much belief they have in their children because if um, the problems arise mostly when um, you know the the a girl or a boy has brought home someone that's not from their community or not from their religion mm, yeah. and uh, and not traditionally um accepted by um, either party by by either family yes and um and that goes a long a lot of that actually depends on the couple themselves and how they've handled it and a lot of couples are non confrontational in, in when it comes to these things so a lot of them just leave it compromise, to their pets yes, yes these are the words that come yes, up there they'll the compromise families. and uh, they'll try and find a way of media they'll try and find a balance they'll try and mix cultures they'll try and do uh, you know some of them have gone to the extent of doing every kind of ceremony from both sides that's also nice you know that's yeah. also nice provided you have the means to do something like that and you have the time to do something like that when you're nris you don't you come very for a very short period of time and 
you know so there is a practical aspect to that as well but we've done that I mean, we've, we've had the christian wedding and the tamil ceremony and you mm-hmm. know you know all of that i mean we we've, we've done the whole um shebang for them so uh, it all boils down to the couple and their immediate parents and how they handle it because it doesn't matter what is coming into them ultimately what comes to me is what's important because i'm executing it so then it, then i know on that day i don't have to worry about anyone coming up to me and saying but that is that not you i'm sorry but i'm dealing with xyz person and that's it so you have something kind of a sheet where you write down everything everything absolutely everyone has a copy of that many sheets so, <laughs> we so have no, a little booklet like, maine aisa kaha tha nahi nahi aapne aisa nahi Uh-huh. No, no, no the, everything is no absolutely none because um, everything is on a sheet like mm. you said there are either email exchanges or written exchanges that are recorded and filed and um and it, it's all and the entire plan has gone over several times so one knows that we're not missing anything yeah. uh, it could be a genuine mistake on either side and we want to avoid it it doesn't matter and at the Correct. end of the day there is no meme tu tu meme because it cannot be the wedding has to happen regardless so uh, you know we try and avoid that as much as possible I'm going to ask you on what you said the wedding has to happen. Has there been in your experience anything when everything is going tickety boo and suddenly the wedding falls through? No. Has that happened? No. Good. That thankfully not yet. Thankfully not. <laughs> no. Baad mein hoga shayad. Shayad. I mean so far so good. Huh? Yeah. Four years running and nothing uh, yeah. even after. So they're all happily married and having kids now. So okay. um but um, no. Right. Which so, I want to ask you the next thing. Sure. Do you take I mean do you have the payment is made up front or after the event or something Yes so I um I work slightly differently from mm-hmm. uh, a lot of other I mean you don't have to s- share any of your secrets no that's okay for your business secrets yeah. but just as a generic question Yes so uh, it is it is important that you do take an advance mm-hmm. primarily because uh, it is your reputation online with your vendors because they've been promised business Absolutely and uh, of course we understand if there's been uh you know an issue that cannot be surmounted or something like that but those things come to uh you know come to play well in advance and uh thankfully i've never had to deal with a situation where everything's ready and then you know something's fallen apart like the wedding's fallen apart and i wouldn't know really mm-hmm. uh what one would do because it would seem very churlish to go and then say mera payment de do bhai because i've done all of it because it's a bit you know what would you do at that point i mean i i i i hope i never have to face that okay but no, to um, avoid that do you take it yes advance? so we do take a 50% advance then they can go fall apart it's their business <laughs> why should your business fall apart no <laughs> But yes, we do take advantage. I'm just trying to be a little, I know, practical about yeah, it. Yeah, no, no, you have to be practical, and which is why um, we don't even start planning the wedding unless there's a fee in place, and mm. uh, it's been agreed upon, and an advance has been paid, which is non-refundable. Okay. So yes, that um, takes care of. Yeah, yeah, that takes care of everything. So now after that, whatever happens is up to them. But uh, what I is the biggest spend in a wedding? Biggest spend for across the board, not any particular community or anything, but majorly, food, what is the biggest food? Spend? Food, food is the biggest spend. because everyone comes away from a wedding talking about how good or bad the food was okay. and um decor is another misplaced huge spend as mm-hmm. far as i'm concerned because i feel that should be the last on the list but a lot of people throw money on that oh right? yes and um and they have to realize i mean I, nowadays with your photographers and videographers mm-hmm. doing this whole candid photography no one's really recording the venue or the flowers or anything like that they're just talking about the, and do all kinds well not super impose but um but you get what i'm saying it's it's all about the bride and the groom and the focus has shifted finally back to the fact that these two people are getting married Correct. and um, and the photographs and the videos reflect that and reflect the people that attended it more than anything else um so for me in you know in terms of a priority spend i would say spend on your guests the food, food because okay. that's important give them great service put them up in nice places i mean don't tear your pants apart for it but um you know do a good job of something like that and make sure you have a good service team on ground to handle them mm-hmm. so invest in a good wedding planner doesn't matter if he or she is a bit expensive ensure that their services are great and you've had you you've got the best equation and then your photographers and videographers i really think it's worth your while to spend the most on them because that's the only lasting memory you have and sure. yeah. um you know if you don't get a good videographer or photographer it doesn't matter what you spent on your makeup or your hair or your clothes because it's not going to look like crap anyway so you might as well get someone who's going to make you look gorgeous so look these, gorgeous yes. even if you're not even if you're not <laughs> but Thank there you. is always a bridal glow don't you think so absolutely Very ordinary looking it's people just, look really good and it's nervous. amazing it's all i think it's it's um um the, it's just something that happens on the day it's it's about it's the excitement it's the fear yeah. it's just all of that it's uh, you know it's uh, it's the, the anticipation and uh, you know I, 
I've dealt with couples all of whom have been in love and I think that is also huge all all the weddings I've done so far have been love marriages not a single arranged marriage mm. um so um that's completely different and they're so excited by that time that that I think this naturally there's a smile on their lips and a twinkle in the eye and you know so it's Better just fabulous than anything else <laughs> pardon better ornament than anything absolutely else. you just spoke about love marriage and arranged marriage what do you see a more a trend of more now i think it's unfair to call it a trend okay um because arranged marriages and love marriages at the end of the day are about two people and it doesn't matter how you got together but the fact is that you need to make it work and stay together right yeah. so um there is a huge in um number of love marriages that i have been exposed to simply by virtue of being a planner and i think that has every everything to do with the fact that our families have gotten a lot more accepting and mm-hmm. uh, families have lived abroad for so long and they've widened their horizons and widened their uh, views on things and they realize that it's i think you know nurture the way the kids have been brought up is 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 of much greater importance than open minded you know, about yes all and this. yeah than than what their roots were i mean i'm, I'm not not to trivialize their roots but sure. you know just yeah. the fact that they've grown up together in in a, in a certain kind of environment and that makes for a greater bonding factor than the fact that you might be two men in but have never lived in you know any sort of similar situation sure, and i yeah. think that's what's more important so arranged marriage I'm not against it. I'm not against it at all. I no, think it works. No, but it's not happening as much as love marriages. Um in well just by virtue of the my four years I haven't really seen too many of those. I mean there are enough. I mean the the industry runs on these arranged marriages of course, but mm-hmm. uh, my experience has been limited to wedding uh, love marriages. So And are there more of these uh, intercultural interreligious kind of marriages happening or are they on the Absolutely. Wedding? No, not at all. They they're all um uh international i mean mm, i have I uh, australian brides and 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 italian grooms and and they also um, come here african grooms yes really yes, yes. it's not just the one indian and one no no two non indians also two non indians have yes um okay. there is a huge push in india right now in the touristic in the tourist department to um so wedding tourism now yes absolutely mm-hmm. uh, so pushing india as a destination and i think it's a fantastic idea because we have so much Color to offer yes. Yes. yes we have geography that are stunning we have hospitality we're the best in the whole world i mean we're the most hospitable people and we have some lovely lovely venues for international clients so Absolutely India is beautiful we have mountains we have rivers we have the ocean and we have some gorgeous valleys and we have so much history and architecture linked to that history that um I see no reason why anyone should go to a Bali or or or, or in Italy or anywhere else to get married we But we have so much beauty and grandeur What about the heat and dust Lakshmi That can all be dealt with choose your venue carefully mm-hmm. and um i mean there's heat and dust everywhere there's there's humidity and pollution everywhere okay. but i just think that india is stunning it's so diverse it's so colorful and uh, there's something for everyone in india is is what i firmly believe and uh, i'm really happy that that india is being pushed as a wedding destination currently in india which is the most popular destination for wedding um rajasthan really rajasthan with its palaces and forts it is, but yes. uh, even, even for, for weddings okay. i think nothing quite like a royal wedding to get things oh, going yeah, yeah, and yeah. i think um i think every bride loves the idea of being a princess and um you know it's very fairy taleish mm. and it's lovely um and and those forts and palaces have another feel to them altogether and it's beautiful it's charming it's um it's history come alive yes actually. and it's um and i th- and therefore rajasthan um is is a hugely popular destination for weddings do you organize just, it for that when you also um I haven't personally yet because yeah. a lot of these hotels uh, and the forts have planners on planners. board yes okay. because most of them have been started primarily as wedding venues um and uh, so they all have and it makes sense for them to have some local vendors board, yes, and, yes local yes, vendors yes. and things to plug it in and uh, yeah so and it's beautiful it's just um, stunning some of those palaces are just lovely mm, I know they are very well maintained aren't they they can the be palaces. yes a lot of them the ones that are most popular are very very uh, well um, 
maintained. Uh, there are some that are not so frequented, but uh, but they spruced up. You know, there's, it's about a week's job to spruce mm-hmm. it up and right. sort of sort it out. But yeah, and but, everybody will dirty it and go and then again spruce it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think these people wouldn't have. Guests who would dirty it, right? It it well, it depends because I mean you have uh, you have a lot of uh, Indians who go there for their weddings, okay. and they and you know it 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 takes all sorts really to make a wedding, mm-hmm. and it, it you know it doesn't matter because a lot of them come with a lot of money, um, and some of them come with little money but a lot of elegance and class, and uh, yeah. you know so the a match between the two is fairly rare. <laughs> and uh, you what know, would so you talk about eco friendly weddings today? We are talking about. Eco-friendly weddings again. Um, I think that should be the watchword for any wedding planner because mm-hmm. just to ensure, um, in terms of being uh, eco-friendly, there are there are there are a few things that we could do because a lot of people do ask me, what do you do? Like, what can we do to make it eco-friendly? Uh, for one, planning it down to the T helps so that there is no wastage, there is no extra diesels. You know, the genset isn't running for mm. longer than necessary, and things like that that you can you can keep in mind. The kind of equipment that you're using, for example, um, you know, you get beautiful hard pressed leaf plates, and you get lots of interesting uh, crockery for that, that that are you know that are biodegradable, that are eco friendly. Um, working with a florist that does recycle their flowers, or at least gives it to companies that know how to recycle it, either to make them colored powder really? or okay. for composting and things like that and these are, these are small little things that you can ensure and if, you know if you if you have a vendor that's not so knowledgeable then i think it's up to you uh, to take the educate responsibility the to educate them um, connect them to the right kind of people and ensure that it happens ensure that it, there's a good waste management system as well because that's as you know that's that's equally important to being eco-friendly and no plastic that's something we follow at our weddings no plastic um, nothing plastic at all as much as we can have you know help um, the kind of fire that's used what's used in the fire and things like that so these are all little little things that one can do a very interesting thing you said Lakshmi is about giving away the the flowers we recycled into powder, colored powder. I didn't know that at all. Yes, there are um, there are teams in Bangalore mm-hmm. that collect flowers um, from wedding mantapas and temples and things like that. Dry them, powder them. I've read an article about these guys. I haven't okay. quite worked with them. I've connected them to my florist, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and uh, in fact, once or twice, they have collected flowers from us as well. And uh, these are used for for kolam or for oh, wow. like for holi and things like that. They're given to schools and, you know, when they have craft projects and stuff. So they're, they're all and they're safe to use because there's no chemical processing Absolutely. whatsoever. And um, and these are things that uh, that Amazing, really help. Yeah? Yes. Amazing. So, okay. I mean, our natural colors came from natural dyes and natural products. So it's just a sort of, you know, going back to grassroots cakes i mean that's it's a hugely burgeoning mm. uh, new market within the wedding industry because there are Even lots for of people indian weddings indian weddings as well yeah? yeah you have you have cakes that have the mehndi design on them and oh. you know there's something uh, to sort of for the couple to do rather than just stand on the stage and smile at like you know a they thousand can come people. And cut the cake and yeah, they have a little bit of a absolutely. So they have a little yeah. bit of a ceremony happening there. Happening there. So okay. it's a typical West meets East sort of mm. a, a thing now. And uh, and cakes are massive. They're they're huge at weddings. Uh, mm. And there's some very talented people in the country in the city doing some fantastic work with cakes. Um, so they make edible flowers and things like that as well. We've actually worked with food centerpieces as well rather than floral yeah. so use oranges and lime and um, all sorts of vegetables and things like that to make a centerpiece green apples and stuff like that so I'm meeting new people you know while, while scurrying for my guests on the show because I also want to give my listeners yes. something new absolutely to why not mull about and so there's this lady who showed me she runs a little chocolate shop mm-hmm. she's got chocolates from all over the world whatever and she has this little um, chocolate which looks like a photo frame Nice, yes, an edible, uh, an edible thing with the printed photograph and everything. Yeah. Yes, yes, we Absolutely. do. We've done that as giveaways. Okay, with the couple's photograph on it and a thank you. See, uh, for me, it was like back. wow, <laughs> and for yeah. you, it is yeah, yeah, yeah. We do. Yeah, <laughs> we've done that because, <laughs> like I said, it's it's uh, there's so much out there. I mean, you have edible rice paper, which is what it's printed on. The uh-huh. photograph is printed on that. Everything is edible, okay. and everything is food grade, obviously. So uh-huh. yes, and there's um, there's you can put your face on the cake uh, as well. Uh-huh. <laughs> so no, cake, I know, <laughs> but I didn't know you could make a chocolate with the frame and with your picture in there. Yes, and I. Told her then 
how, what what does one do with it? She said, eat it. Eat it, yes. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. That's an expensive Bite the head off. <laughs> But it's a good idea. It is. It is. And it works really well because it's a little like a lot it's of couples so personal, put a little no? yes, it's very it's personal, personal and people remember it and yeah. you can you can put a little message saying thank you for being here. Oh. And, you know, so it's it's nice. It's a little gesture to the guests. Like I said, at the end of the day our whole Indian hospitality um watchword is Aditi Devo Bhava. And yeah. whatever we do, I think if we take care of our guests at weddings. That feel good factor for well, them when they walk out and yes. say Kya Sharita. Absolutely. Everything yeah. from not having to wait in a line mm. for your food to drinks coming in on time to things the wedding itself um being on schedule. All of these go to go a long way in ensuring that guests walk away happy you know and not just the family and i think it's i think it's very important i really think it's extremely important because you 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 you've invited them there for a reason and you wouldn't yeah. want them to suffer for any reason at all isi nahi fan isi nahi hai fan nahi hai barish ho rahi hai there's no you know um covering no protection so you need to take care of your guests and i think that's very very crucial to a successful wedding you said the biggest spend is on food what is the next again talking about food what kind of food is popular mostly in weddings whether it is south indian or north indian whether it's ele uta or uh, kiosks may serve food um right now <laughs> everyone's going for this very um multi cuisine sort of where they give you chaat and dosa and yes uh, if not across uh, i mean i we advise them not to do it at one function but try and do like okay. a food story mehndi across first. functions okay. so you do like your chart and things for the mehndi and do something is interesting for the sangeet uh, let the wedding be you know traditional traditional food. and and then the reception be more western possibly again reflecting the idea behind each event and ensuring that uh you don't repeat dishes because mm-hmm. you know you have the same you have a core of, of about 200 people that might be attending the and same and they say kal ka bachcha hua kaha correct <laughs> and they're like kal bhi ye tha yeah. aaj bhi gulab jamun acha kal bhi gulab jamun hoga you know so we try and ensure that you know those things are also different and make sure that favorites are i mean you have to have some safe you know food you you have to have like your butter chicken at some point and you have to have that dal tadka or dal makhani or you know rajma, one of those think. yeah some things well, which are maybe favorite rajma, with but yes you know something that that you know that the popular uh, vote will um, like in a time ramp go for wedding like the pulio great yeah or the lemon rice or something like that and you know those are the things the tamarind rice the uh, the sort the tamarind yeah, right that's uh, a big hit. as well yeah so you have to have those things and you can't do without it um so it's um it, it you you know you have to balance it out and you have to make sure that you're not overwhelming anyone's stomachs especially when you have foreigners at weddings you have to make sure that you have a little something for them Continental that's dishes, not indian yeah. yes maybe a pasta counter or something a big dish or something that that they they know they can fall back on because they can't handle the you know the spice or the heat or you know whatever it might be so have you added on uh, sugarless sweets for yes. calorie watchers yes, and diabetics yes yes when the brides if the bride or the groom have uh, diabetic parents for example uh first priority is to ensure that they have food that that they can eat at any point and uh, yes so we do um we do watch out for allergies we do watch out mm-hmm. for um sugarless and things like that and um one of my uh, um, advices to uh, a couple would be to ensure that we don't have any allergy like shellfish i mean we try and avoid oh, okay. shellfish okay. because a lot which of people might not which suit m- some people yes yes but do they So fi- oh yeah fish they do prawn yeah, yeah. uh prawns and things crab prawns especially say in, in kerala kit. yes yeah especially in kerala for a mm-hmm. christian wedding i mean mm-hmm. that's huge non vegetarian is is the is the bottom line and uh, seafood specifically because it's fresh seafood or in goa or something like that so we of course we can't you know have a wedding in goa and not have the the, the local, local fair yeah. but we ensure that there's enough of non allergic food for people you know so they have a decent meal as well What about goodie bags and things like that? Do you get into those also? Yes, yes, we do. We're a you know you come to us for a complete three sixty on your wedding, so we do everything. Okay. Goodie bags uh, for as many functions as you want them. Possibly a welcome gifts in their rooms, thank you gifts as they leave. Okay. Um, it could be personalized. It could be generic. It could be anything from your traditional. tambulam which is the coconut and mm. the blouse piece and the okay. uh, kumkum and all of that to um you know to lamps and 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 specially um crafted uh clay pots or oh, vases yeah. and things like that or glass photo frames or swarovski or, you know it really depends, depends on what on you want budget. to spend <laughs> yeah or nanos where some people have I'd have been known to do that but yeah 
Good fun, yeah. Yeah. You'll be yes. shopping also a lot, no? <laughs> yes, that's the best part of my job. Yeah. I get to go shopping and I don't have to worry about my purse strings mm-hmm. being affected. So, yes. Do, but do you don't tell them this this is uh, where you stop and that kind of a thing? Um it's already uh, it's listed out my deliverables to my client are listed out and uh, above and beyond is like on a friend basis yeah know. it it depends i mean there's a lot of advice that you can give them and you do consider that you know i mean you do you know how much of work and how much time you'll have to put into it but uh, but yeah but it's it's all usually vetted early on and uh, you know exactly what you're expected to do how much time you need to spend on something like this and uh, they give you a budget so it's easier Mm-hmm. and you know that you don't have to waste time looking for too many things because you have something you have specifics to meet i remember the backdrop of mine reception photograph uh-huh. was just the jolly door of that uh, wedding hall okay <laughs> that's it then it was a kind of a decorative jolly door that so there you the go only decor for that and the wow. best decoration was me and my husband standing and there. there you had it right <laughs> you had it absolutely right thank you very much thank you so